On this project, I just want to throw this in for you guys to show you what the concrete has looked like um, from the one we poured uh, last week. So let's have a quick look. All right, guys, so this is the space. So me and Amdi actually hid um bring some blocks in we had a delivery so we started bringing some in so we've actually if you notice we've actually got some bricks and we've actually got some blocks so these are actual facing bricks they might look like engineering bricks but they're not they are facing bricks so you can see uh, on the side here so what we're using these for is for this wall here on the side of the house and also this wall here so basically the two walls that we can't render are going to be done in brick to waterproofed maintain their waterproofing and uh, the back wall and uh, the front the front of this and also the shed will be in block as well because they're going to be rendered and we can access them from obviously from that side and once this wall is up we will take this fence down and we can render the back as well so that's basically what's going to be done for that so this come out good remember you might remember we had a lot of rain that day well, it did come out all right we covered here with the tarpaulin um so yeah it, it come out good the only place you had a few issues was this one because we didn't have a top to cover this area and um what we did is we had put some dpm down and covered the floor so you can see where where the plastic sort of dug into it here and there well, this is in the shed so what we're going to do is once we build this shed we're going to self-level in here and that will just tidy up all those little bits where you can see where the plastic smudged it and stuff but otherwise yeah it come out all right so yeah we are nearly there ready to start block laying on this job it is rainy london again it's just raining and raining and raining i've never seen it like this i mean we are in sort of march sort of February, March there does tend to rain a bit, but it's just it's just every day almost. You literally, literally can't plan anything outside. It's just really troublesome. But you know we got to move on. But today's video, I just want to give you guys a quick update on the situation that happened yesterday. So you guys may have seen. If you haven't, check out yesterday's video. While we were digging the foundations uh, on the timber house. Um, we are actually digging for the drains actually we were putting in some drainage for the toilets we accidentally hit a cable that was in the ground now this cable <coughs> is the cable that powers the garage at the back of the garden so it runs from the main house and it's run through the garden and it runs to the to the back of the of the garden right down to the back and there's a, a there's quite a large garage there actually um, you could probably fit um, four cars in there it's quite big um and um so from my understanding from conversations the previous owners of the house used to restore classic cars and stuff in the house uh well in the back garden anyway in that shed or in that garage so i would imagine they were doing sort of they had sort of high power tools and stuff like that probably welding and stuff um <clears throat> and uh you know maybe even ramps and stuff like that so obviously they have a lot of power that they need at the back so it seems that they ran this cable now we originally when i originally saw it i thought it was an armored cable um because when when i i wasn't there at the time namdi was digging and, and accidentally hit this cable which is quite shallow which is another thing and um he told me oh they hit the cable and he damaged the cable so i was like all right we can get it sort of sorted out um but when i did get by the time i got back and we turned the power on or the owner told me that there's no power in the house so i thought well it's probably just tripped out so gone to the consumer unit had a look and everything was up he said he turned everything up there's still no power so at this point i'm a bit confused so in the, in the end of me looking at it i've traced it back to the main fuse has to have gone and it seems like this armored cable is taking the main fuse up so while I'm looking under the under the stairs, if you look in yesterday's video, I've realized that the armored cable is connected into the system before the consumer unit. So after the meter, but before the consumer unit. So there's no sort of protection from the consumer unit. There's no breakers or anything that would sort of trip out if there was a short. So obviously it's taken out further down the line, it's taken out the 
main 100 amp fuse of the house so ie the house has no power and i've had to call up uh the the main sort of network provider for electricity who are the only people who can touch this fuse and they have to send an engineer out and they got to replace the fuse so cut long story short i had already left site now because it was like six o'clock and he hadn't turned up yet and we called him at like uh, lunchtime so i said to the <coughs> customer when he comes let me speak to him on the phone because i want to ask him to remove that cable that you know is connected so that it could later on be connected a fuse board so so he's called me the engineer's got there like quarter to ten in the evening and he's facetimed me so we've had a chat he's facetimed me and he's basically said something's not right here and the cable he said the cable that he said to me the cable that you hit is our cable so i'm like i'm sure i haven't hit the mains cable entering the house i'm very sure of that that this cable goes to the guard gardener so i said no that that's an armored cable that runs down to the back he said i could remember the type of name for this cable someone might know electrician might know what the name is it was all this fancy word well basically he said the cable that was running to the garden is not an armored cable and one of you guys did mention that in the comments and you were very correct it looks like an armored cable has the sort of steel some sort of steel wiring around it but he said it's not an armored cable this is this is the cable that the electric company uses you know supplies electric to your house with so he said this they're the only one that essentially uses this cable and that cable is their property so i basically damaged their cable <clears throat> because obviously someone has to pay for the call out and they're obviously going to try and bill me for it so but the main thing was that he said that he didn't like the look of things and there was a couple of things that came up one was where it was connected which i knew was a bit dodgy anyway and the fact that it's their cable a cable that you you sort of wouldn't typically have there and also he said at the end of in the garage um there was i couldn't remember what the word he was he said i actually had to ask him to tell me what that was but basically the sort of uh, mains fuse that you've got in the house there's sort of a connection and there's sort of a main fuse and that that whole sort of block here he said there's one down in the garage which is at the end of that cable and he said that that is something again that only they will put in so he said the fact that that's in there again which is property of theirs suggests that someone like him who works for the network is basically been paid some money cash in hand or whatever and installed that cable and installed that fuse down the other end for them and to be honest i had sort of some suspicions about that cable because if the cable is 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 wired in after the meter then all the supply gets metered so all the electricity that you use gets billed to you if it's wired in before the meter which would be illegal um, which some people do do then you would be getting free electricity essentially because it would not be being read by the meter so i'm sure lots of you have heard of of uh, marijuana houses and stuff like that and drug houses where <clears throat> they've got lots of electricity and lots of lights and all that stuff they that's something that would tend to happen in that scenario where they wouldn't want the number one to pay the high electric bill and also the high use of electricity can raise flags of you know using so much electricity at residential premises so you would see somebody would bypass the meter now it brought me back to something when i spoke to the customer who is who when they moved in the garage was already there now he said to me a couple of months ago they had a smart meter put in and when they put the smart meter in he said to me that the guy who put the smart meter in told him that the garage at the back was getting free electricity so that means that the garage at one point was connected before the meter and it seems that the guy who put the meter in took it out and put it on the other side of the meter and connected it into where where i showed you guys on the video so it's weird that he didn't flag it up with anybody and just sort of put the meter in 
move the cable, put it on the other side. This guy who's come in, he's been a bit more sort of, uh, you know, sort of a little bit more uh, sort of by the book with it in that sense. So he's sort of like saying that he has to refer this on to some sort of investigation team or whatever who have to come out and investigate everything. So they are coming now to look at the system. He's taking all these pictures and they're coming to investigate. He does. He couldn't say to me that he thinks that electricity was being taken for free, which I know it wasn't. But he said he just doesn't like the look of everything and the fact that that cable is in there in the first place. So it needs to be investigated. So at the moment, he managed to put a fuse in. He disconnected the cable. He actually took the cable out. The cable ran under the floorboards and went outside below the ground under the sort of paving stones. He actually removed the cable. He dug out some paving stones on the outside like where you saw us working. And he pulled the cable out all the way down to the drain where we had actually damaged it. So I think he, he does not want that cable to be used again. So he's completely taken it out. Um, so the owner is gonna need to get an electrician to actually put in the proper armored cable and run it all the way to the garage because at the moment <clears throat> the garage has no power so yeah so basically the update is it needs to be investigated something looks like criminal has been done obviously not by the owners who are sort of like elder elder people and they are more they've recently bought the house um but the people who were using it before doing the mechanics and whatever it seems like they had done a dodgy whatever got someone to give them free electricity run the cable put the fuse in all that stuff and it's like they when they left they sort of left left it there as that and the meter guy picked it up but didn't escalate it anywhere just rectified it to an extent um and obviously now we've come up with this issue which is an unsafe issue um unfortunately nobody got injured you know um so yeah that's basically it so thankfully we've got power back for the customer it took a long time for them to come out they didn't get in till quarter to 10 um and now we're just going to wait for the visit and i have to wait for the report to be sent to me because i'm the builder and i'm the one who's basically has to take responsibility for damaging it or for causing the fuse to blow should we say so i'm going to get a bill he did mention about some things that i could do to contest it I will definitely be contesting it because number one, my my view is number one, that if that cable belongs to, or if they're taking the claim that that cable's theirs and I damaged it, then their cable, number one, shouldn't have been there in the first place. And, and also he said to me that that cable's not on any of the drawings. So if they don't know the cable's there, how the hell am I supposed to know it's there? Like, do you know what I mean? It's a cable that's illegally there and it's not my fault that it's there. So I'm not going to take responsibility for that. I mean, if they're just going to charge me for putting a fuse in, which they might more than likely do, um, and it's, you know, sort of a couple hundred pound or whatever, two, three hundred pound, I would probably just pay it and it would just be easier and less headache for the customer and everyone. But if it's anything above that, then I'm going to have to sort of contest it or whatever. Um, obviously, I am insured, so I've got that option as well. But um, yeah, just, just wanted to let you guys know the update because these are, again, you know, the day in the life of a builder, things that can happen on jobs and things that do happen on jobs. First time it's happened to me, um, so it's a new thing for me, but you know, it's something that can happen. Someone mentioned as well about using a, uh, I can't remember what they're called now, cats, a cat and, cat and Jenny. Um, it's sort of like this, sort of a, uh, uh, sort of an, a test star that tells you if there's any sort of, cables and all electricity anywhere and stuff under the ground definitely a good idea it's something i will look into they're not cheap but i would maybe consider looking into that so we could you know not likely have this problem happen again um so yeah it's definitely something i'll look into but yeah that's it guys so yeah i just want to give that quick update it is raining i am on my way home now um we will be back there on friday morning to pour the concrete for those footings so we may have more of an update when I go in there um, <clears throat> if the customer gives me an update, but that's the update I've got for now. So guys, hope you guys enjoyed this and you learned something and it's been something interesting. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.